Good morning, David here with a discussion, not on palm trees today, but agaves. Uh, yes, I am a collector of desert flora as well as palms and cycads, so I want to do a video of the great plant, xeriscape plant, desert plant, the agave, which was identified and named by Swedish botanist Carl Linnaeus in the year of 1753. So they're grouped into desert plants uh, closely related to at one time asparagus. Uh, they've been renamed like I said in 1753 uh, but the slow growers desert plants there are probably 15 to 20 or more that are Florida friendly meaning they can tolerate our temperature and humidity but I wanted to go over some of the common ones that you see here in Florida. This is called agave americana or big blue. This is the most common one you see in uh, North Florida and throughout the state. This can grow as large as eight feet in height by eight feet in width. And agaves, most of them are monocarpic, meaning they flower, send a flower stalk off, uh, and then they die. But agaves are kind of odd. They can reproduce by seed capsules or bulbous, B-U-L-B-I-S, which are little, I'll walk over here and show you, pups or uh, babies that the flower stalk has formed and this is agave desmeniana variegata this actually threw up this flower stalk november of 2019 nine months ago i've actually got a picture of it when it started growing but you can see some of them come out green bulbous b-u-l-b-i-s some of them come out green they'll start to grow roots and then uh, the genetics of the variegated plant will also come out and i took some really unique ones about three weeks ago you call this a half moon. It's green, variegated on one side, and then you've got a uh, albino leaf, and then several of them are totally albino, lacking any chlorophyll, so they're really unique. So I just, uh, I've never actually potted any up personally from bulbous from a flower stalk, so I'm interested to see how these are. Of course, we're having a lot of rainfall at the time, so I got to keep them out of the sun because they're recessive traits here, not having chlorophyll and kind of dry. And then a supplement to the big blue is agave americana variegata, or also they call it marginata, meaning it's variegated on the ends. And variegation is irregularities in the leaves where they come in cream, yellow, white. Also, two ways to reproduce an agave is by most commonly asexual reproduction, offsets or budding where they put up pups and babies, and then sexual reproduction where, as I discussed earlier, sends up the stalk, it flowers, and then whatever the agave decides to do, push out seed pods and spread its seeds to reproduce itself and keep the life cycle going, or these bulbous. Uh, they've actually been growing pretty fast. And that, that also comes in a green form. And then our next one is agave angustifolia or magui, it's a Caribbean century plant, uh, this variegated with white. So you can see the difference in yellow and white. And most agaves are armed with uh, spikes on their rosettes. The canopy of leaves are called rosettes. And they have armament or shark's teeth. And then the end spine is called the terminal spine, meaning at the end. But at Earthworks, we carry about 20 different species. I don't have all of them here. And another unique one is they call this commonly the spaghetti strap agave. It's real soft leaf, doesn't have any armament on the margins, but it does have a uh, slight terminal spine. Agave gemniflora or spaghetti strap, real thin and wiry. And then the last one I wanted to go over was the agave blue glow. This is actually a hybrid between agave attenuata, which attenuata, this is my personal agave is a soft leaf agave. You see this uh, commonly in Mexico and Southern California. It is an agave, by the way, that can tolerate much more water than the common agave can. And it's soft leaf, no terminal spine, no margins. Agaves make great container plants. Uh, they're native anywhere from Southwest United States down through Mexico, Central and South America. So it's an American uh, agave native to the Americas. So blue glow is a hybrid between the foxtail agave, agave attenuata, and agave akuhoi. I'm not sure if I pronounce that right, but it's really unique. You can see the bluish hue to it. And when the sun's shining, 
the margins are colored in red. The sunlight actually illuminates the red and yellow margins. It's really unique. It looks like there's lights on in there. It's, it's pretty cool. And as far as the genus agave, you know, new species are coming up every day uh, by the explorers and discoverers and but botanists. But it's, so it's said currently there's about 166 species. Of course, you have the green and blue colored leaves and then the variation of variegated. So technically that's not another species, it's just a subspecies uh, with the variation in colors. So just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Uh, and they're great, uh, great xeriscape plants, meaning set it and forget it. You don't need to water them, fertilize them. And one uh, topic of importance, if you do live in Northeast Florida, we'll get enough rain from our precipitation, especially at the current time. It's been, I think it's rained 20 days out of the 24 days 23 days in uh, August so far. So when you plant your agave, if it's not in a container and it's in the ground, make sure you don't have it in an area where your daily irrigation comes on for your lawn or your uh, tropical or perennial plants because they don't need to be watered every day, especially in the winter, absolutely no water at all, depending on the temperatures. But most of them are frost hardy and cold hardy. So uh, good fit, Florida friendly for, for the state of Florida. There are many benefits uh, health-wise, medicinal-wise, uh, product-wise with agave. Uh, the agave sisalana is, is harvested for uh, sisal in Mexico. Of course, agave tequeliana, which I don't have here, a species of, hence the word. You can make an al the famous alcoholic brev uh, beverage tequila. Agave nectar is great, a natural remedy. Uh, doesn't have the sugar content uh, uh, as, as fructose and glucose does in sugar. Uh, and also it's used in food products and hair products, uh, making shelters. The agave nectar is a great medicinal and health benefit to humans. Also, they make hats and brooms out of it. Uh, and it serves a, a, a great use other than just enjoying it in your landscape. Come on into Earthworks and take a look at our agave selection, as well as our cacti, yucca, and succulents in the greenhouse. And my name is David. If you have any questions, uh, give us a thumbs up, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and have a great day.